let us understand what is repurchase agreement see repo is basically a money market instrument used by banks to borrow money from the rbi so repo means who borrows the money banks borrow the money from whom rbi it is a collateralized lending it means the bank has to give something as a collateral uh, for lending by the rbi wherein any government securities oblique bonds are specified by the rbi can be used so banks you know uh, they generate income by investing in some bonds so they may be holding some bonds uh, government bonds or they may be holding some state development uh, sdl bonds so all these bonds and the government securities which the bank is holding they can give as a collateral while taking money from the rbi so repurchase agreement has got two legs leg one is rbi gives money to the banks based on the collateral so rbi gives 1 crore let us say and they say okay you give you give us bonds equal to 1 crore which you have you know um, bought from the open market and we will keep it with you so as soon as you return that 1 crore we will give you back that 1 crore back that is what in leg 2 the rbi receives principal plus some interest as agreed upon and returns the bonds back to the banks so this is known as repo repurchase agreement the period of buying and lending is called as the repo period see when the repo rate is greater than the current yield current yield we know we have already discussed then the repurchase price will be adjusted higher indicating that there is a capital loss i hope you understand this see when the repo rate that the repurchase rate is higher than the current yield you have to adjust uh, higher uh, so that the, you know there is going to be a capital loss for the uh, you know rbi similarly when the repo rate is less than the current yield then the repurchase price is adjusted lower indicating a capital gain for the rbi repo results in induction of liquidity in the market how see you are giving money to the bank means money bank is getting more money for, for them for the 14 days or whatever is the repo period so that is means money is given by rbi to the banks hence liquidity is increasing in the market reverse repo is nothing but the rbi buys bond you know bond from the banks issued by the bank or rbi sells security to banks if they are selling it means they are taking money from the uh, banks so reverse repo is usually done to suck liquidity out of the market now there is a very important concept if you have to understand you know slr uh, and all there is this important concept of net demand and time time liability should be understood because everything will be calculated as a percentage of this uh, statutory liquidity ratio uh, crr and laf they are all adjusted as a percentage of net demand and time liability the you know net demand and time liability looks very uh, you know complex but it is very simple see net demand and time liability have one two three concepts one is demand liability another is time liabilities and another is other demand and time liability minus all assets held by bank now what are demand liabilities means any a provident fund or anything which has matured which is supposed to be returned back to the investors is called as demand liabilities so demand liabilities are those liabilities like matured equities savings account holding even savings account holding you cannot touch they are all demand liabilities because the person can come and take the money any day he wants so that will come under demand liabilities whereas time liabilities are unmatured fds which are there with the bank so these unmatured fds are time liabilities you have to pay back you have to give back those money over a, after a period of time assets are nothing but all the monetary assets held by the bank at any particular point of time now what is cash reserve ratio that is why 
See, it is a percentage of NDTL a bank has to park with RBI as per the RBI norm. So, cash reserve ratio is basically done to ensure that some amount of money always remains with the bank irrespective of I know uh, a, a, any problem uh, with the bank is facing. See, bank suppose take gets one crore deposit from the retailers. Out of that one crore deposit, after calculating this net demand and time liability, whatever the NDTL amount which is left with the bank, a percentage of that has to be parked with the RBI. You know, you because the bank cannot touch it because the money uh, will be with the RBI. So it is usually 4% of the NDTL. So that is called as cash reserve ratio. Cash reserve ratio is some amount a bank has to keep with the RBI. How much is that amount? That amount is 4% of the net demand and time liability. It is a liquidity management tool of the RBI in the economy. See, if the RBA increases the cash reserve ratio, it is taking the money out from the bank because they are compelling the bank to put more money with the RBA. So tomorrow, let us assume that the CRR becomes 8%. So the bank has to keep more money with the RBA. So the money will be sucked out of the system from the market. Okay. Now, a very important part is RBI does not pay any interest on the cash reserve ratio. Any amount deposited by the bank with the RBI as a CRR, you know, get no interest. Now coming to statutory liquidity ratio. Statutory liquidity ratio is again the percentage of net demand and time liability. The banks and foreign institutional, you know, financial institution has to keep with themselves. They don't have to keep with the bank, but they have to keep with themselves. They can keep it in the form of GSEX, government say bonds, uh, and uh, in form of cash or anything else, but it should never be used for lending. It can be in terms of gold, it can be in terms of cash, or it can be government securities. But government security should not be traded, gold should not be traded, and cash should not be lent to anybody else. So that is the amount of a seller which is required, a seller means a percentage of NDTL, the bank has to keep in the form of gold, cash or government security is called as statutory liquidity ratio. Again, it is a whereas CRR has to be kept with RBA, SLR is to be kept in the banks itself. This is again another form of liquidity management tool by the RBA. See, it is presently 18% of the NDTL. So, 18% of the net demand and time liabilities held with the bank should be kept in the form of either gold or cash or government securities and should not be used for lending purpose. Actually, this, this particular SLR is considered as a captive market. Captive means local market for government checks with no refinancing risk. They don't have to refinance it because usually bank has to keep SLR. So most of the banks, instead of keeping it in gold and cash, they will keep in government securities because government securities generate some amount of uh, money. So that will be a captive market for the government. So when the government need no more money, they can just increase the SLR. Now coming to liquidity adjustment facility. LAF means liquidity adjustment facility. See, it is a money management tool for the banks where banks can borrow and park excess funds with RBI for a day-to-day -day liquidity management. So, it is a facility given by the Reserve Bank of India to the banks. If they have got excess money, they can park with the RBI or if they want liquidity, if they want more money, they can borrow from the bank. It is an overnight lending and buying facility not for long periods lending and borrowing is done through repo and reverse repo it means if the rbi is lending money then the bank has to pay repo whatever is the existing repo rate and if the uh, bank uh, put some money with the uh, rbi 
for a day or two or a overnight then reverse repo is the rate at which rbi will pay interest for the amount deposited with the bank you understood na liquidity adjustment facility means suppose i am a bank i have got 1 lakh rupees i want to keep 1 lakh rupees for one day with the rbi so i will say suppose the repo rate is the rate at which rbi lends money to the banks isn't it and reverse repo is the rate at which rbi gives interest to the banks for the money they take suppose if i put 1 lakh rupee with the bank for one night i will get an interest equal to the reverse repo rate if i take 1 lakh rupee from the bank for one night i have to pay interest rate which is equal to the repo interest rate so rates for lending and borrowing is set during monetary policy announcement see monetary policy is done every quarter so during that period this rates of lending and borrowing is done again laf is set as a percentage of net time and net demand and time liability so if the banks require more liquidity they can use msf and msf mss that is market stabilization scheme so what is msf marginal standing facility suppose if the bank in need of dire need of liquidity for example one to two days then they can pledge whatever gsec held in statutory slr with rbi at rate higher than the repo rate usually the rate demanded by the rbi will be slightly higher than the repo rate so marginal standing facility permits the banks to use the government securities held in their slr to deposit as collateral with rbi to take money for overnight or for one or two days but they have to pay an interest what is the interest rate the interest rate will be slightly higher than the repo rate mss means selling of bond by rbi to suck liquidity from the market so these are the uh, various aspects now in the next uh, you know video i will cover small saving instruments available to retail investors uh, thank you very much